Giant worlds like Jupiter obliterated by their own parent stars. Could one of these worlds allow us a closer insight into the inner hearts of giant planets? And what are giant planet cores really like? Well maybe now we can find an answer to that question thanks to the discovery of TOI 849b. Astronomers have long sought after answers to what lies beneath the giant cloud decks of planets like Jupiter and Saturn. Do these planets have rocky cores deep in their interiors and what would those cores be like? We have been able to study the interiors of giant planets in our solar system in great detail since the flybys of the Voyager spacecraft in the late 70s, utilising numerous methods to delve beneath the dense curtain of gas in an effort to understand what these planets are made of, how they form, and eventually what their fates are. Jupiter, the largest planet in the solar system, is 10 times larger than the Earth and weighs nearly 320 times as much as our home world, and yet it hasn't been an easy road trying to understand how this planet formed, or even its physical structure. We have been able to use radiometers, magnetometers to probe beneath the surface of Jupiter, finding weather phenomena like giant hurricanes with wind speeds up to 500 miles per hour. But maybe the most interesting feature of Jupiter is the giant ocean of liquid hydrogen that's believed to be flowing inside the planet. When the pressure becomes so high, the hydrogen gas is squeezed into liquid form, metallic hydrogen as it's called. Now as we learned in high school science class, hydrogen atoms are composed of a single positively charged proton orbited by a single negatively charged electron, explained well by the Bohr model of the atom. When the pressure in Jupiter gets so high, eventually those electrons are stripped from the atoms and we have a soup of free electrons moving through the fluid. And when driven by Jupiter's fast equatorial rotation speed of 43,000 km per hour, these produce Jupiter's strong and wide-reaching magnetic field. Now, since June 2016, the NASA spacecraft Juno has been in orbit around the planet, taking some of the most breathtaking images ever taken of any planet. Juno has revealed a wispy upper atmosphere, the swirling gas clouds carving formations, even the most delicate brushstrokes of a talented artist would have difficulty matching. Now, one of the most exciting results to come from Juno so far comes from the measurements of the planet's gravitational field. Back in May 2017, a study led by Sean Wow from the University of California produced the first detailed results on changes in Jupiter's gravitational field from the Juno mission. If we look at the modelled structure of the planet, we can see the very upper regions that we observe in our images are composed of hydrogen gas and little else. If we go deeper into the planet, increasing the pressure and temperature sufficiently that helium can condense out and we have a region of helium rain, then this happens around a pressure of around 1 billion pascals or 1 million times the pressure at sea level on Earth. This is followed by a metallic hydrogen and helium mixture. Right at the centre then, we believe there also exists a rock and ice core, the outer layers of which can mix with this region just above. Now if we look at this plot, we can see the change in density with distance from the centre of Jupiter, and it's clear that different models produce different densities for the inner half of the planet, which depend on how much the dissolved core expands out. The solid curves and dashed curves represent models from two different teams, and the different colours represent different core situations, either a compact core with no mixing above, or a dissolved core where some of the fraction of heavy elements dissolve from the core and mix with the hydrogen helium envelope. Now all the models tend to converge for the upper half, they all predict essentially the same density. And we can see some results from the team in their attempts to bracket the range of masses allowed by the heavy element core. It depends heavily on the model assumed, as can be seen here for the models of different colours, since the different physics of the models, like the assumed equation of state, or what the state of the matter is in a given volume, like pressure and temperature for instance, and how those change as a function of each other. This changes the core mass to total heavy element mass inside the planet. However, it seems that the early results from Juno point to a range of masses between around 6 to 25 times the mass of the Earth for the core. So, looking at all of this, it can be seen that we still struggle to understand the fine details of what the core is like, 
what size and mass it has, what it is truly made of, for instance. However, new results from the transiting exoplanet survey satellite, TESS, may allow a glimpse into what the cores of these planets are really like. The planet in question is named TOI 849b, a large terrestrial world that orbits its star in only 18 hours. Now, the star itself is found in the Fornax constellation in the southern hemisphere, but given its distance of 730 light years from Earth, it is much too faint to be observable with the naked eye, coming in at a visual magnitude of 12, which is around 250 times fainter than the faintest stars we can observe unaided on a dark night. Tess observed the host star, an old sun-like star, from September to October 2018 and found periodic drops in brightness of the star happening every 18 hours or so, indicating a body with a size only three or four times that of the Earth was orbiting the star. Such so-called transit signals or occultations of the star oftentimes turn out to be spurious events, regardless of the tests we run on the light curve from these stars. Background binary systems that are eclipsing each other, for instance, but just happen to be close to the star in question angularly on the sky, can make it look like there is a transiting planet. So in the end, we really need ground-based spectroscopy at really high resolution to unequivocally confirm the signal is from a genuine planet. And this also allows us to measure the planet's mass in these cases. Now our team, for this study, led by the University of Warwick astronomer Dr David Armstrong, observed using the HARPS instrument in northern Chile, and were able to confirm the planetary nature of the orbit. TOI 849b has a mass 40 times that of the Earth, and when combined with a radius that is smaller than that of Neptune, we find it has a density of 5.5 grams per cubic centimetre, which is very close to the density of the Earth. Here we can see the mass radius diagram for transiting planets, showing the position of TOI 849b along with various structure models shown as the dashed curves. If we compare TOI 849b to these models, we find that the planet is in agreement with having a pure iron core, a silicate mantle and either a pure water layer above or a pure water layer with a small fraction of mass of upper atmosphere that is in the hydrogen helium form. In fact, no more than 4% of this planet by mass is in the form of hydrogen and helium. It is almost fully composed of heavy elements. This is intriguing to say the least. Models of planet formation tell us that planetesimals, the young growing worlds that end up as the planets we find in the solar system and beyond, should end up with a large gaseous envelope once they reach beyond a mass of around 10 times that of the Earth. In this regime, the disk of leftover gas and dust from the formation of the star where planets form cannot maintain a stable state, since the gravitational field of the growing planet is large enough for the gaseous elements to collapse onto the core. So the question is, why doesn't TOI 849b have much atmosphere? One way for this to be the case is if the intense radiation field of the star strips away the planet's atmosphere over time. TOI 849b is so close to its host star that its year, the time it takes for the planet to orbit the star, is only a little over 18 hours. This means it is close enough for the process of photoevaporation to significantly affect the atmosphere. However, if the planet started its life with a mass similar to Jupiter, then only up to around 4% of the atmosphere could have been lost, according to our models, which is not enough. Of course, the planet may have started life as a smaller gas giant, but then we require more models to explore the limits here. So other scenarios need to be explored. Models can indeed form such planets, but it requires fine-tuning, such as having the planet form far from the star, then when it is migrating into the close orbit, it undergoes a massive collision with another body that strips away the atmosphere. But crucially, the collision happens so late in the evolution of the planet that there is no significant gas left over in the disk to accrete onto the core again, leaving behind a planet like TOI 849b. Other scenarios could involve tidal interactions with the host star, where the planet migrates inwards with a very non-circular orbit, or high eccentricity orbit, and when it is passing closest to the host star, tides are raised on the planet that cause thermalization events that can expel atmospheric layers. However, such models require a lot more testing. 
So there we have it, a new giant and dense Neptune-sized planet orbiting its host star with a period of only 18 hours. This places it as a so-called ultra-short period planet and it's found to exist in a region called the Neptune Desert, where there is an extreme dearth of planets found with these masses, radii and orbital periods. We are learning new things every day from discoveries coming from instruments like tests and harps, and things we thought we once knew turn out to be not as clear as before. However, planets like TOI 849b may hold the key to understand the formation of giant planets like Jupiter, allowing a window into the parts that we can't observe directly, even with spacecraft orbiting the solar system's largest planet.